Hello everybody, in this video we're going to look at encoding, specifically encoding color images. Alright, let's get going. So if you're just looking for the questions, please skip ahead now. So for a quick review, you should watch the code.org video. It's a great video going over how computers work, binary, and data. Link is in the description below. Other concept we learned about was the concept of analog versus digital. So analog, these are real world pictures, real world sounds. They are smooth and continuous, and they are in perfect detail. Digital information, on the other hand, is when we take that information to the computer world. This information is discrete, or in chunks, or blocky, and it is approximate, or good enough. At least we hope it's good enough. And sampling is a process by which we can make things go from analog to digital. So you did this in your previous lab. Sampling just means we're taking measurements at regular intervals. In this lab, we took a grid of the swan image, and then for each sample or pixel, we made a decision as to whether that block should be on or off. The more measurements we take, the more closely the digital will resemble the analog. And we found that with our SWAN lab. If we want to do the same thing for color images, we start off in the same way. That is, we have an image, and then we sample the image. That is, we take measurements at regular intervals. And now it's a little bit different, because it's not just black and white anymore. Maybe it's gray, maybe it's yellow. How do we account for that? Well, we do the same thing we've always done. If we need more combinations, we throw more bits at the problem. So code.org does a great job of explaining this. For black and white, we have one bit per pixel. For color, we can have three bits per pixel, corresponding to each of the primary light colors, red, green, and blue. It doesn't have to be three. You could have six, nine, 12, any multiple of three, but it needs to be a multiple of three, so it's divided evenly among red, green, and blue. And just wrapping up the good and the bad, when you use more bits, you get more combinations of colors, and that's good. At the same time, it takes up more storage space. And if you've ever run out of space on your phone for photos, you know how much of a pain this can be. So I'm going to go over the color encoding labs from code.org. I've already gone over part one, so I'll skip this for now. Part two, it starts off with this video. I recommend you watch the video. The link is in the description below. This first one says there's eight color combinations. I think this is actually a typo. I think it just say three bits per pixel, which would give me one bit per color. But with three bits total, that gives me two to the three combinations or eight combinations. And that's what it says we have. So up here, we have an appearance of metadata. The first one is width. So we have the width, which is four in decimal. We have the height, which is two in decimal. And we have the bits per pixel, which is three in decimal. So the first one we have here is red. Red is turned on, but green and blue are off. The second one we have is green. So let's finish this by making the blue, which has the blue on and everything else off. So now we can go out and fill out the rest. We can turn all the colors off and then we get black and we can turn all the colors on and then we get white. The last three will be turning two colors on and one off. So turning red and green on gives us yellow. Turning red and blue on gives us magenta and turning green and blue on gives us turquoise. And then we're done with that one. This next one goes up to six bits for pixels. And as we know, with more bits comes more color possibilities. So here I'm able to tune my red from zero to one to two to three, going from least red to most red. So here's the activity. There's another video you can watch here if you want to. I don't think you have to watch it, but here we go. So now we have two bits for each color. So how many colors does that give us? Well, it gives us two to the two, which is equal to four. So basically what we're doing is turning one color from zero to one to two to three, while keeping every other color at zero. So I just did that for the reds. Now I'll do it for the greens. I'll highlight the greens here so you can see, but basically it's going from zero to one to two to three with everything else staying at zero. So again, basically no green, a little bit of green, more green, most green. And the same thing for the blues. No blue, some blue, more blue, most blue. Problem five is more of the same, except this time we have three bits per color. So this gives us two to the three or eight combinations, assuming we turn everything else off. So basically we're gonna keep everything else off and make one color go between zero and seven. So here's how it works. For that first row, we're setting green and blue to zero, and then we're increasing red. Red will start at zero and go all the way to seven. If you convert the number that's there for red, it's a binary number, it'll convert to decimal, and that decimal number is between zero and seven. So it's pretty much the same thing over and over again, make something go from no green to lots of green, no blue to lots of blue, keeping everything else turned off. Problem six, this one is about picking an image and sampling it. Remember, when we want to convert analog to digital, we sample it first, and then we convert each of these samples to bits. So I picked image two at low sampling frequency. All right, so the assignment is to convert this to binary, which is gonna be kind of a tough task. First thing I'm going to do is set the width and the height. It's five by three. 
and then I'll set the bits per pixel. And I'm going to be a little bit ambitious here. I'm going to say 24 bits per pixel. This is a standard setting for, I think, JPEG images. And what it means is my red will go from 0 to 255, and so will my green, 0 to 255, and so will my blue, 0 to 255. So then I need to see what color I'm going to assign to these pixels. And for that, I'll use a Chrome extension called Eyedropper. And so what that allows me to do is sort of to use the dropper and see what color something is. So it's going to give it to me in RGB format, which I will then need to convert to binary. So truthfully, this gets very hard. I ended up using a binary calculator to do it. I'm not sure how code.org expects anybody to be able to do this. It's not something I assigned to my class. Uh, but in the end, this is what I ended up with. It's not that great. The colors match reasonably well, but because I've sampled at such low frequency, parts of the image where it changes a lot, like the middle row, look bad. And if I wanted to fix that, I would have to sample a lot more frequently, especially in that middle row. All right, so now we're on problem eight. Which statement about analog and digital images is true? I think right away you go to B, sampling an analog image more frequently produces a digital image with a better representation. So this is something we did with our last one. We saw that our image was not sampled enough, and so we could not get that middle row correctly. We also saw it in the black and white images when we did the swan. C and D, analog images come from data that is measured at regular intervals. That's actually reversed. That's digital. And for D, digital images come from data that is measured continuously. That is analog. So C and D are kind of reversed. And A, with advances in technology, digital images look exactly like the analog images they represent. Well, you saw in our examples, they did not. They can look pretty, pretty close if you sample a lot. But I think in general, the AP board looks for you to say they're not exactly the same. So we answer B and get the correct answer. All right, for this last question, they want us to talk about sampling, RGB pixels, binary sequences, and how they work together. So we know that real world images are analog. And to convert them into digital, we have to sample them, which is measuring something at regular intervals. When we sample images, pixels are what result. Each of these pixels needs to be converted into a binary sequence. And these sequences, the first third describes R or red, the second third describes G or green, and the last third describes B, and how much of red, green, or blue that you have. And when you combine the binary for all these pixels, you get the digital representation of the image. All right, practice questions. How many times more colors can you represent with six bits per pixel versus three bits per pixel? We're going to use our formula two to the bits is equal to the number of combinations. So when we say times, we're looking at the ratio of the two. So this is two to the six over two to the three. When we apply the quotient rule for exponents, this is the same as two to the six minus three, which is the same as two to the three. You'll want to know the quotient rule for exponents because it shows up on the APCSP exam, but it also shows up on the SAT. So it's kind of a two for one opportunity to learn. So the answer is B, two to the three. Before I leave this question, I want to show that this question comes up in many, many, many different forms. It's basically the exact same problem over and over and over again, and you'll want to know how to do this problem. So for instance, I could ask, when going from IPv4 to IPv6, I'm going from 32 to 128 bits, how many more IP addresses do I have? So we do the exact same thing. It'll be 2 to the 128 over 2 to the 32, which is equal to 2 to the 128 minus 32, which is equal to 2 to the 96. So the answer would be 2 to the 96. Another question that comes up all the time has to do with YouTube counters. So YouTube counters used to be 32 bits. At some point, they went up to 64 bits. So the question is, how many more views can I count now? And the way I do this is I go 2 to the 64 over 2 to the 32. And that's equal to 2 to the 64 minus 32, which is equal to 2 to the 32. And that's how many times more views I can keep track of now. So again, this concept comes up all the time. So you'll want to know how to do this problem. Next question, how many times is your file size if you represent your image with six bits per pixel versus three bits per pixel. So the trick here is we're looking at file size and six bits versus three bits is twice as big. So this is a little bit of an easier problem. The answer is two. Historically though, kids have gotten confused about these problems. So I just want to go over it really quickly. When I'm looking for how many combinations, I'm going to use the combination formula. So the colors, the number of colors I can show, that's related to the number of combinations. So again, if I'm looking for combinations, I'm going to use the combination formula. But if I'm just counting bits, then just compare the bits. And size is related to bits. So again, colors are related to combinations. Use the combination formula. Size is related to bits. Just compare the bits. Next question. The first part here is just talking about RGB. So we want a color that is five shades more blue than this color. 153, 101, 21. Give the answer in binary. So RGB, you'll want to remember that. Five shades more blue is 26. 
So basically this problem comes down to converting 26 into binary. So I've gone over how to convert decimal into binary elsewhere. I'm not going to do it here. Just going to say here that 26 can be rewritten as 16 plus 8 plus 2. And that 16, 8, and 2 match up to these three binary place values here. 1, 2, 3. If you want to convert 26 to binary by doing division and getting remainders, that's a great way to do it too. And actually, that's the way I show it for beginners. So the answer here is B. One more question. This question is truthfully kind of similar to the last one. The first part talks about what RGB is. And we want to know which color is this particular binary one. So there are some tricks when you see this kind of question. You definitely don't want to do the blues because if it's powder blue or light blue, you can't tell for sure which one it actually is. So you want to pick one where they're all different. So let's try the reds. So this binary corresponds to 128 plus 32 plus 16, and that is equal to 176. 176 is the red for powder blue, so there's your answer, C. If you have enough time, you could check green also, but it's not absolutely necessary if you did the calculation correct here. All right, so that's pretty much it. Hope that was useful to you. And if it was, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.